गुड इवनिंग प्रिय छात्र बिंदु छात्र छात्री बिंदु आज के सन्ध्यटेंट टपिक्स आलोचना करब जेटा परीक्षार जो खूब ही इम्पोर्टेंट एक्सामेशन अब दर एंड इनभेस्टिगेशन अब इयर डिजिज एक्सामेशन अब दर दिस इज इम्पोर्टेंट फर योर शर्ट केसेस एक्साम जेटा बोली अस्की एखे साधारण कमन इयर प्रब्लेम दी इजुअलि क्रनिक अटाटिस मीडिया क्रनिक सपोर्टिव अटाटिस मीडिया तुम्हारा जानो दो टाइप टू टाइप वन इज टीव टीमफैनिक एंड दर इज एंटी कैंटर इटर टर्मोलजी अब चेन्ज हो टाइप के बोले मिकोजल एटी कैंटर टाइप के बोले स्कमस डज मैटर स्टील नाउ इट इज एक्सेप्टेड अल ओवर द वर्ल्ड जो क्रनिक सपोर्टिव अटाटिस मीडिया टीव टीमफैनिक टाइप एंड एंटी कैंटर टाइप ये दोटाई साधारण परीक्षा दी इसलिए और अन्य केस आज है बट फर द आंडार ग्रेजुएट दिस इज एनाफ ये दूटे केस पढ़ले ही है नट ओनलि दैट हमें इयर टा कि एक्जेशन करब सिसटेमेटिकाली एटाई तुम्हारा आज के बोलो बो, जो हाउ टू प्रोसिड इन योर रियल एक्साम एरपर इनभेस्टिगेशन बेपारे हाउ टू इनभेस्टिगेट इयर डिजिज एखान कि ऑडियोग्राम थोड़ा परीक्षार जो अस्पिर जो खूब इम्पोर्टेंट and we will discuss that as well so welcome to my classes so let us start with oski year examination now how to proceed you know परीक्षा समय আমরা কতগুলো ফরমাল নিয়ম কানুন আছে সেটা আমরা বলবো যে কিভাবে তুমি প্রসিড করবে एग्जामে so initial step you have to introduce yourself that i am mr x y or z i am a fifth year medical student I am going to examine you. I will not hurt you. If you have any problem, please tell me. Clear Bangla bolbe. Jami fifthere medical student. Our name Mr. Farooq or Jai Hok. I am going to ask you to do some work. It is not your fault. If you have any problem, you can ask me. So this is your introduction to the uh, uh, patient. Jole and then take concern. As of course you have to take concern. Jira apni bolna. I am going to tell you. Apna apna ashu dhabna. आघात करते हार्ट कर लेक्रेडिट फर दिल्ली सामने दिखे बुल्स आई लम थो पुलिस लम थे लाइट फोकस कर हेड मिरर फोकस करतम एखन थे छिद्र आई आई पीस छिद्र दिए लाइट रुगर दिखे फोकस करतम देखा जाए इस समय अनेक प्रब्लेम होत फोकस करते जार फिर एन सर हेड मिरर ना दिए सर हेड लाइट दिए दी हेड लाइट सरसर लाइट जो जैसे हाथ माथा यू कैन फोकस टू देशन सो यू डोट है प्रब्लेम अब फोकसिंग लाइट बट समटाइम स्टील देर आर साम सेंटर देर मे बी हेड मिरर सो यू है हाउ टू focus the light over the patient okay then position of the patient and yourself this is very important that to be patient er sange face to face bolba your legs would be apart from the patient's leg not in between the legs eba bosha pore ekta equal distance maintain korbo at least reasonable distance maintain korbo so that you can see the patient er pore tumi shuru korbe kaner porikha amra bolbo as a examiner okay ei patient er examination of the kant ta jokhon dekhba with focusing the light to be dekhba inspection of the external layer that means external layer mainly jeta amra pina dekhbo because external external layer canal ta to external layer er part eta to amra light with speculum chara amra dekhte parbo na to sutra ki korbo tomara kaner inspection of the external layer that specially pina je kono anomaly ache kina axillary auricle ba onno kono kichu ache kina pre auricular ekhane ei jagay there may be a sinus About the periodical uh, region, so is there any periodical sinus? Is there any scar mark? 
in the post auricular region dekhba is there any post auricular region any scar mark or any sinus because csm er complication e post auricular abscess sinus hoye jete pare sheta thakte pare so inspection of the pina pre auricular region and post auricular region this is the first part and then you press the post auricular region to see is there any tenderness over the mastoid area ei jagay dekhba je kono tenderness ache kina and see the facial expression of the patient so you did that now go to the external canal now as you know external canal is a bit curved in different direction so if you want to have a good look to the external auricular canal you have to pull the pinna upwards outwards and laterally so that make the external auricular canal straight and then with a the good light you see is there any discharge or not so it's a routine practice because you will be given csm you may have given dry ear or you may given with discharge so if you just have a look to the pinna is there any discharge get a jobson horn probe with cotton wool and clean the discharge and get the smell this is very important for exam because keyotimic type you will get non smelly profuse discharge in case of atheogenal type with cholestratoma jeta ache atheogenal type you get very foul smell so jokhon tumi dekhle scanty discharge get this discharge and get the smell ei rokom obostha hobe foul smell so you have idea yes it can be case of atheogenal type and then once you clean the external auric canal you take a oral speculum oral speculum kane bhitor deba there pore now we see the deeper part of the external auric canal and ear drum so now you see the position of the perforation if it is keyotimic type you can get a central perforation atheogenal type you will get a atic or marginal perforation you can get a ground fin tissue or you can get in the atic retraction pocket you can get a cholestratoma so that you can get and most of the cases you will be given the idea before your examination as you know your registrar is there so they will train up you how to uh, get the examination of the ear as well as the findings but so this is the your your common scenario you will get this one now you note the perforation of the tympanic membrane you note the external other features like your ground fin tissue or like your polyp retraction pocket perforation in the attic margin or central so you note this one now you have to once you finish this one and then you go for tuning fork test this is a very important tuning fork test or hearing test before that sometimes you can uh, get the fistula test how to do this one just ask the patient to look at you straight ahead and you press the external auricular or tragus downwards press this one for few second and then release so just give some few times you will get if the fistula test is positive you get a nystagmus mass in the eye that is all and now go for tuning for test that is the important part and what i do for the last 20 years i have been taking examination sometimes in er section i am not giving the full ear examination i ask the student okay you do the rini test and weber test to this patient and try try to pick out the finding up or uh, pick up the findings of that patient so that's only tuning fork test is sometimes enough for your ear examination that's why it is very important so i will show later in the picture so you have a 512 frequency tuning fork it has got as you know the prong will i'll show you so what we'll do just give this you just start the olecran process like this very simply and then you check the vibration yes and ask the patient clear instruction to the patient that i am going to produce a sound with this instrument and i'll put this sound in front of the ear here along the external auditory canal about 4 cm from the external auditory canal the prong will be here like that not like like this not like this okay just along the axis of the external auditory canal can you hear yes and then put the stem over the master process here can you hear yes can you tell me who is this louder in the in the front or in the back that in the ear or in back of the ear clear instruction to the patient okay and then notice either rini is positive or negative rini positive means ear conduction normally better than bone conduction so the patient will notice more in the ear than the back this is rini 
positive. Now, renal negative means the bone conduction better than ear conduction. So when you talk, can you hear? Yes. Can you hear? Yes. Which is louder, in the front or in the back? The patient said in the back. So if the patient hear better in the back, that means bone conduction. So this bone conduction better than ear conduction is called renal negative. What is the principle of renal test? The principle of renal test is to compare ear conduction with the bone conduction in the same ear. This is the principle of renal test. So once you finish renal test, now you again ask the patient now, I will put a sound uh, with this instrument. I'll, I'll, I'll keep the instrument over the top of the head or on the forehead. Now you tell me, where do you hear better? Any particular ear, right, left, so right, or left, or equally hear both sound or in the center. So this is the Weber test. Now, the, the principle of Weber test is to compare bone conduction between the ear. The, the Weber is central in normal person, or if the person has got equal amount of hearing or even hearing loss. Weber is lateralized to any particular side if the patient has got conductive deafness. So the Weber is lateralized to the conductive hearing loss side or disease here. This is Weber is lateralized to the right side means the right side has got conductive deafness. The Weber is lateralized to the healthy side also, if the opposite side is no hearing or dead ear or profound hearing loss, because this is no hearing. So when you put this one, the patient is perceiving hearing for the bone conduction. That's why he is hearing from this side. So whoever is lateralized to any particular side, that means, suppose whoever is lateralized to the right side, it means either the patient has got right side that conductive deafness or the patient has got left side that profound hearing loss. So this is all about your Tuning test. So once you finish the tuning test, and then you can go for a facial nerve examination. That means you just examine the patient's facial nerve. Can you close your eyes? Can you wrinkle the forehead? Blow the teeth, uh, blow the uh, cheek. So the upper one is close the eyes, uh, wrinkle the forehead, and this one is just blow the cheek or so in this way, you can assess the hearing, uh, sorry, facial nerve. Once you finish this one, for the postgraduate students, or sometimes all the undergraduate, last one is you have to examine the post-nasal space examination, PNS examination, to see is there any lesion in the nasal pharynx. This is uh, hardly for the undergraduate, but for the postgraduate, because suppose a patient has got conductive deafness, otitis media with effusion or glue ear. So glue ear, the most important cause may be adenoid, maybe nasopharyngeal cancer, maybe nasopharyngeal angiofibroma, maybe endocrinal polyp, any can causes excision of dysfunction and that can cause conductive hearing loss or glue ear. So if the patient has a glue ear in post-gazard examination like MS, FCBS or FRCS, you have to examine the personal space to see the etiology of your glue ear. So that's all. So for you people, you don't need that, but you can ask, can I ex um, examine the personal space? The exam will say no, no need. Because in the CSM patient, you don't need to do PNS examination, okay? So that is all. Once you finish this one, then you just thank you the patient. Okay, thank you very much for your nice your, your findings and till the exam, examination. Now, how we will present this one, your CSM in the exam, in the examiner, I will tell you. Okay, I think just, uh, I just uh, discussed this one, assessment of the hearing level. Uh, voice test actually you don't uh, need for undergraduate. Uh, it is very much, No, uh, you can assess the patient's hearing by simple voice test. Now, usually we do uh, we side by side, we usually uh, masking the uh, lip reading, and then we just uh, uh, give a trigger wrap to mask this ear and we test this ear. Now, if the patient can hear whisper voice, like 37, 
present hearing level is around 30 decibel. If person fail to uh, listen, whisper voice, then 25, 35. If he can hear, his hearing level is about 50 to 60 decibel. If he fails to do that, then sow, 25, 35, about 80 to 90 decibel. So this is for the postgraduate, not for you. So for you, tinnitus, as I said, you discuss. Okay. Now, at the end of the examination, give thanks to the person, as I said. Now summarize your finding. Suppose, suppose, this is a case of left-sided chronic saprodip otitis media with cholecystoma. Suppose this is your short case or atricondal type of CSR. So how do you present your case in the examiner, okay? After all this examination. Okay, sir, uh, don't diagnose your case first. First, your findings, sir, running commentary, sir. On inspection of the of the pina and pre and posterior uh, region, I didn't find any anomalies or any scar mark. Uh, Exhibition of the external ear shows. Uh, So I cleaned the discharge and I had to look to the position of the left ear drum here and whatever is lateralness, fissural test is negative. I just uh, uh, check the fissural nerve, it's also intact. So my diagnosis, left-sided, chronic, supportive, otitis media, uh, ethical type or with cholesterol. So this is your running commentary of your examination finding. So these are the thing. Marginal part process, it, it occurred test, renal waiver test. Uh, now, as you know, atricondal type of CSOM, your treatment is straightforward. No conservative treatment. Okay, sir, I will start with the medical treatment. If medical fails, then I'll go for operation. No, absolutely rubbish. Because this is the atricondal type of CSOM. If you don't treat, the patient have complications. In, in rare cases, in under postgraduate students, suppose a small attic crust or attic colostoma, in this situation, we can clean the attic region. Uh, we can clean the attic region and go for atricotomy sometimes. But for E people, atricondal type of CSM with cholecystoma only one treatment. What is that? Sir, my case is I want to do uh, surgical treatment, mastoid exploration, or you say modified radical mastoidectomy with chemoplasty. Modified radical mastoidectomy with chemoplasty. That is your answer. Now, next question is, uh, you know, there are lots of complications of this operation. So what are the complications of this master surgery? So there are some complications like most human complications, injury the facial nerve, injury the dura mater, injury the sigma sinus. Immediately we can injure the labyrinth. Patient may have sensitive hearing loss or dead ear. This is the complication of this operation. Now, what are the other types of CSM? Okay, tuberculosis type. What are the complications of Atrical type of CSM, if you don't treat, so you'll treat extracranal complication, intracranal complication, like your extracranal, like your facial palsy, mesuritis, mesuritis, visual abscess, labyrinthitis, oh, uh, petrocytis, all this. Intracranal complication, like your subdural abscess, extradural abscess, brain abscess, especially the temporal abscess or cellular abscess, uh, meningitis, encephalitis, hydrocephalus, all. So this is a cross question of a CSM. So that is about your uh, short case, ethical type of CSM. Now, next is your simple one is, how do we present CSM tuberculosis type in right here, suppose. 
So again, the same way, so our inspection of the uh, Pina, Pri, and Postural region uh, shows uh, no anomalies. Uh, exhibition of the external canal or external, or external canal shows profuse thin discharge. I clean the discharge, I get the smell, it is non smelly. And now I had to look to the eardrum with the oral speculum. I found a, a big central perforation. Uh, then I, I did a, a tinnifer test. Ring test shows uh, right side ring negative, left side ring positive. Weber test uh, lateralized to the right side, indicating right side conductive deafness. Uh, facial test uh, negative and also facial nerve intact. Uh, so my case is uh, right sided uh, onyx saphoroidic orthotis media, Thibaut tympanic type. Okay. Now, in this articondral or tibetan type, uh, sometimes we ask also the question. So now the first question is, uh, then what do you want to do? Well, sir, uh, as this, uh, there's some discharge, uh, so this active stage, so I would like to give medical treatment uh, in the form of antibiotic, azithromycin, or any form of cyclop, oral uh, uh, drops, nasal decongestion, to make the air dry and, and ask the patient not to uh, get any water entry, not to swim, or if you don't swim underwater, so once the air is dry, then there is option. I will go for operation that is laryngoplasty or tympanoplasty to close the perforation. If the patient has got a hearing loss a bit more, which will be tested by pure nodogram, uh, then patient may need some sorts of osteoplasty. But usually in this case, I will do laryngoplasty or tympanoplasty. That's it. Then what are the common investigations you want to do for this tibotibrin type or even the last one, the uh, previous one is atomal type. So the common investigation for here, I will discuss in the next topics, but for you, for this short case, well, sir, I will go for a pyrotonodogram. Uh, pyrotonodogram, uh, I will uh, see the level of hearing level of deafness is a mild, moderate or severe deafness. He will give an idea either patient has got sensory hand loss or mixed deafness not. So pyrotonodogram is very important. X-ray, master tons view, in case of atonal type, I can get a cholesterol or you can also uh, do a CT scan of the temporal bone in case of atonal type. Tibetan type, usually uh, it's obvious, so only PTA and embrace is all. Sometimes if you don't get the dry air, then you can get a air swap for culture and sensitivity test to give the appropriate antibiotic. So that is all about your, you know, all these questions. Now, as you know, the atonal type, lots of complications. What about the Tibetan type? Do you have any complication if you don't treat? Yes, sir. Uh, in case of tibetan type, uh, if I don't treat the patient right way, no patient may have chronic infection, then if the dish is coming up, it causes otitis externa, and then patient may have a metal stenosis. Or gradually, patient may have erosion of the ossicles, so patient have more and more hearing loss, or even the bacterial toxin can go inside the ear, patient may have sensory neural hearing loss. And if the patient has been discharging it for a long, long time, so this is one of the important cause of middle ear malignancy or cancer of from the chronic otitis media. This is the complication, okay? So that's all about, uh, those all about your cases, examination of the ear and your short cases. So if you summarize this one, okay, before that, uh, there's some interpretation of the tinu for test, uh, I will show you. So these are the, uh, your presentation I, I discussed, first question I already finished. Now, uh, just say about tuning for, this is very important for your OSPI examination that, okay, tell me, this is the tuning for about 512 frequency. Uh, it has got uh, different parts, as you know, it's passed in the OSPI. Uh, this is the, the base, the stem, and this is the shoulder, and this is the two uh, blade or prong. These are two prong, okay, PR and prong, prongs. Uh, this is the shoulder and this is the uh, base and this is a stem. Okay, so this is the parts of the tuning fork. Now, next question is, what are the tests done by this tuning fork? Tell me five different tests done by this tuning fork. Okay, so one is, classical one is Rini test, number one. Number two, waiver test, as I showed. And number three, absolute bone conduction test, ABC test. Usually this test actually, uh, we usually compare the bone conduction of the patient with the bone conduction of myself. So we bypass the ear conduction, we close the external canal, 
so that we only just there's the bone conduction. We just start the clean floor, and then hold this one over there. And when I when I'll not here, then I I just uh, press the patient's uh, external canal and pull it here. If the patient's still here, that means his bone conduction is better than my bone conduction. That means he might have conducted hearing loss because. Conductive hearing loss, bone conduction better than ear conduction. So I am a normal hearing person, and he is a conductive hearing person. So his bone conduction will be long, longer than my bone conduction. This is the absolute bone conduction test. But usually nowadays we are not doing that, not that much. So these three tests is uh, Rini test, Weber test, ABC test. Now what else? We have also uh, Bing test. We are also Stringer test. These are the tests done by Clinic Four. Uh, in this regard, they'll say, okay, tell me some cause of conductive deafness. Or the sensory deafness, all question asked in the OSPI in tuning fork. Now look at this how I am doing Rini test. This so this is a Rini test. Now this is a good practice that always support the person's head. Look at this, always support. Do you think this is support the head? Because patient will jump off like that. So always support the person's head with other hand. Start this one, support this one, and just look this how close the external canal, full central air from the external canal. And I'm on the long axis, and and the tip part of the tuning fork is the most vibration. So you have to put the tip along the long axis, not the middle part. Okay, this is a, a tip for your Rini test. Now, actually, uh, and when you put this in the bone conduction, you just put it here in the machine process. And this Weber test. Look at this. The Weber test shows the lateralization to the right side. So patient might have right side the conductive deafness. Or patient may have left-sided profound sensory hearing loss. So this is Weber test. Now look at this symbolic uh, picture. What you will see here finding? Look, the Rini test. This is the right ear. This is the left ear. You always confuse with your ear. This is my right side. And this patient's right side. No, patient's opposite. Patient's left side. Patient is opposing you. So this is my right side. That is patient's left side. You always do mistake in the exam, right leg. So always think of this, which is which. Okay. Now here, look at this. The Rini is negative on the left ear. Rini is positive on the right ear. Weber is lateralized to the left ear. So Rini negative left ear. Rini positive right ear. Weber is lateralized to the left ear. So what is the diagnosis? My diagnosis is left-sided conductive deafness. Okay. This is the you know central perforation of your finding. Sometimes you can get. Uh, look at this. This is the eardrum, and this is the perforation here in the attic and closest one. So this is the attic perforation of that atticonal type of CSOM. Uh, also, you get some complication. Also, you can get on your exam that patient have facial palsy. Look at this. The angle of the mouth is affected. Uh, you saw this is the left side. Look at this ulceration because patient is unable to close the eyes. So there's ulceration of the of lead. So patient has got left-sided facial palsy. Look at this here. Another is uh, post auricular region. There is a discharging sinus for a complication of chronic otitis media. Look at this here. Patient have already frank abscess, post auricular abscess, or master abscess. This is a common complication of atrochondral type of CSM with colostrum. Facial palsy from CSM. This is another. Look at this post auricular. Discharging sinus or postural sinus for a cholesterol. So these are the findings in your exam. If you have this one. So investigation of ear diseases. We already discussed some. Now, what are the common investigation? Now, what the ears do? The ears are responsible for hearing and balance. So there are some investigation for hearing. There are some investigation for balance. For you people, only some investigation is important for your exam that I'll discuss. Now, suppose the patient has got discharging ear. So, what we can get? We can get a ear swab for culture and sensitivity. Okay. Then, for the hearing level, tuning fork test will show either patient has got conductive deafness or sensory deafness. So, this is a qualitative hearing test. But Pearson audiogram is a test to measure the hearing level. Either a patient has got mild hearing loss, moderate hearing loss, severe hearing loss, or profound hearing loss. 
So that will be assessed by your So, peer an autogram will give. And decibel sounds are conduction as well as bone conduction. PTA, very, this is the bone conduction in the right ear, Carhartt's nose, and this is a graph will be given very frequently in the exam, in the OSPI examination. And this is the ear conduction. Look, so the bone conduction is, is, is nearly normal, excepting this uh, nose, but the ear conduction is going down, and there's good ear bone gap. So this is the classical case of conductive hearing loss in the right ear with a Carhartt's nose, and this is classical in case of autosclerosis. This is the other audiogram. Look at this. Uh, this is the bone conduction at a normal level, about 20 decibel, and ear conduction around uh, 35, 30 decibel, and there's good ear bone gap. So this is a classical presentation of conductive hearing loss. In conductive hearing loss, you'll get bone conduction normal, ear conduction is down, and there will be ear bone gap. Now, look at the other one here. The both bone conduction and ear conduction going down. Bone conduction around uh, 30 or 35 decibel and then sloping downwards. And ear conduction also going downwards. And there is minimum ear bone gap. Ear and bone conduction going parallel with a minimum five decibel gap, suppose. And this is a classical example of sensory neural hearing loss. So in sensory neural hearing loss, both ear conduction and bone conduction will be going down. And there will be minimum ear bone gap. Look at the other graph. The bone conduction going down below 30 decibel. So this is a marker of cochlear loss, 30 decibel. Bone conduction touching 30 or below. Ear conduction is about 50. Ear bone gap about 20 decibel. So this is classical uh, case of mixed deafness. Mixed deafness means the patient has got both conductive as well as sensory deafness. So in case of mixed deafness, ear conduction, bone conduction both going down, bone conduction going below 30 or uh, 30 or below, and there will be ear bone gap. So this is mixed deafness of your nodogram. And these are the chart given in the OSPI examination. Another is uh, impedance autogram or tympanometry. And it will be given MCQ for this, or it will be given a autosclerosis patient with, as I sh uh, showed you, the pit nodogram with Carhartt's nose, as well as you'll be given an impedance autogram, which shows a small amplitude or, or timbrometry, AS graph. So this is a classical. Now, what are the different types of graph? Look at this. Normally, normally the peak is the middle ear pressure, and it is in the zero pressure. Zero pressure means it is equal to the outside pressure and inside pressure. That means it is equal to the atmospheric pressure. So normally, A graph is found in normal pressure, this one. Look at this, there is a peak at zero level. So this is normal. And this compliance is the, is the amplitude or height, usually about three to four ml, this one. And this side is uh, negative side pressure, and this side is positive side. So this is the impedance autogram. You will have to know only that there are some few graphs. What are those? A graph is normal. Type B graph, look at this type B graph. B graph is flat. The flat type B graph is classical example. You'll, you'll be um, uh, given this one B graph. In case of, you'll get this in OME, autodesk media with effusion, 
or perforated eardrum, you will get type B graph. Type C graph, look at this, the peak is in the negative side. This on C and then going down. So this is the positive side, this is the negative side. Now this type C graph is found in case of issuation tube dysfunction. Issuation tube dysfunction will get type C graph. Type AS graph, this one, the middle air pressure is normal, zero level, but the amplitude or height of the temperometry, uh, temperometry, uh, uh, the temperature or uh, impedance is, is, is less. So this is ossicular stiffness. In case of autosclerosis, you will get type AS graph. Type AD graph is high amplitude. That means the peak, there is usually no peak actually, or high peak. Uh, complex is very high. Uh, this is in case of ossicular uh, discontinuity. This is type AD graph. So these are the graph you will get in impedance audiometer. This question will be asked in the MCQ, in the oral exam, in the written paper as well. How to investigate your disease, okay? So these are the graph. Remember the graph, different types of graphs. Especially type B graph in case of autodesk media diffusion or perforated eardrum, And type C graph in case of issue tube dysfunction. Okay, normal type A graph. So these are the different types of graph, usually five types. Uh, next is, now, so the basic test, hearing test of, for undergraduate people, only two. If you know one is pure pronotogram and the impedance autogram. In impedance autogram, you will be given not only the different types of graph, also we can get the stability reflex, acoustic reflex, you can also measure, but this is for you, you don't need this one. Now, what about the children? Suppose a newborn uh, uh, baby or child, or about one or two years old child has got suspected hearing loss, or mother has got torse infection, and you suspect, yes, child might have profound hearing loss. So how do you assess this hearing? You cannot do peer audiogram in this child because they cannot respond. So for these uh, children, there are some special type of objective type of hearing uh, test. We have to know this one for children, for new net, which are suspected to be a case of hearing loss. So for that reason, we have to know this, some other types of hearing test is called evoke response audiometry. That means evoke response audiometry, ERA, in response to acoustic stimulation, you know, in response to the acoustic stimulation, the sound wave travels, uh, as you know, for, through the eardrum to the cochlea, and from cochlea, they are travel along the auditory nerve to the brain. So, okay, evoke evo audiometry is this the computer-based technique where we can measure the signals from all this level, and we can make a plot, and then we can assess the yes, the patient has got hearing level this level. How suppose a patient has got 90 decibel hearing loss. So when you stimulate the patient with 30 decibel, there will be flat graph. That means no response, no graph, no action potential is coming out. 60 decibel, no action potential. 80 decibel, no action potential. 90 decibel, then click, 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 click. That means action is coming up. So in this way, you can assess, yes, the patient has got 90 decibel hearing level. So these are the objective. The patient doesn't need the patient's response. The patient can sleep even. So this is called Evocosmodometry, now this picture is in the auditory brainstem evocosmodometry, ABR. This is one of the obstacle type of hearing test. These are the different types of graph. Along the auditory travel, as you know, one uh, wave one, two, three, four, five. This is the cochlear nerve level, cochlear nucleus, superolivary complex, lateral lemniscus. Intracolliculus. As you know, the you know the neural pathway, so all the level of graph is coming up through these. Other simple way is uh, is your uh, autoacoustic emission. Autoacoustic emission, you, you know, uh, this is uh, one type of uh, uh, test for children for unit for hearing assessment for screening test of hearing. Uh, this is actually the cochlea, you know, cochlea outer hair cells input we can measure with this autoacoustic emission. Uh, there are electrocochleography. This is the ECOC, electrocochleography. 
we can also uh, measure the hearing level we can also also measure in case of minor disease uh, this is the summation potential and this is the action potential and this is the common action potential now the same way electrocochlearography we usually put a active electrode through the uh, through the ear drum to the promontory and there are reference and surface electrode from here ground electrode coming connecting the brain with the mastoid and then we stimulate the ear now suppose 30 decibel level there's no action potential coming up so 40 decibel level yes action potential coming up so his hearing level is 40 decibel so this is very simple you know so these are the objective test of hearing this is is electro cochleography electro cochleography now the next is your radiological investigation so once you finish your radiological investigation there are other impression like speech audiometry we don't uh, need you don't need for this uh, post graduate student they need this one for you people only two hearing test is pietonogram and impedance and that will be asked in the exam and that will be given in your ospi examination next is your radiological investigation on imaging now in x ray suppose you have a csm with cholecystoma we usually give x ray what is x ray this is the x ray this is called x ray mastoid town's view and this is the exam x ray this x ray will be given in your ospi examination look at this this is the x ray mastoid so read the x ray or name the x ray next is x ray or plain x ray mastoid town's view then what is the finding the finding is look at this finding this is the left temporal bone this is right temporal bone look at this there is a large circular radiolution shadow in the right tympanomastoid region in this you have to read the x ray the large circular radiolution shadow in the right tympanomastoid region with sclerosis margin the left tympanomastoid area shows multiple ear cells like honeycomb the next is what is the diagnosis so my diagnosis cholestatoma in the right middle ear cleft we don't know why is the cholestatoma maybe mastoid antra mastoid ear cells middle ear so better better to say so my diagnosis is cholestatoma in the right middle ear cleft then tell me two dd different diagnosis so number one is carcinoma of the right middle ear and number two dd is your post mastoidectomy cavity that means the patient had already mastoid surgery and we made a, we made a cavity there that means the cavity so post mastoidectomy cavity these are two dd now next dd is next is what is your treatment plan or what is your, what do you want to do as i said before any case with cholestatoma our treatment is modified radical mastoidectomy with chemoplasty modified radical mastoid with chemoplasty then then maybe other question okay tell me some complication of this uh, surgery or complication of disease complication of disease extracranial internal complication complication of surgery as, you know, as i said before uh, injury to the facial nerve injury to dura mater injury to sigmoid sinus meaning bleeding infection postocular uh, infection wound dehiscence and you can injure the medially labyrinth in a ear uh, leading to labyrinthitis leading to dead ear okay so this is the x ray exam x ray now this is the uh, mri scan of the brain showing a uh, just a uh, hypodensia here with uh, periphery hypodens with hypodens with the resolution shadow here and this is the classical uh, case of a temporal lobe this temporal lobe is a temporal lobe abscess for um, uh, complication of chronic suppurative otitis media how do we suspect the patient has got abscess as you know suspicious of internal complication suppose any patient csom suddenly develop internal complication what are the common symptoms as you know we have severe vertigo headache blurred vision this uh, confused okay raised integral pressure papillodem all this and localizing sign like nominal dysphagia or aphasia now how do we treat this patient this patient need near neuro surgical intervention like bar hole expulsion drain the pus and then we can go for mastoid surgery like radical mastoidectomy operation sometimes we can also if you don't have a neuro surgeon we can also expose the mastoid we can expose the uh, expose the dura mater and we can drain the pus but usually need neuro surgical intervention now this is the mri scan of the brain showing a uh, look at this at the hypodensis area and the cp angle huge 
this is a classical example of acoustic neuroma or CP angle tumor. And the acoustic neuroma patient usually presents with a unilateral, profound sensory hand loss. Uh, this usually needs a neurosurgical approach, posterior fossa approach to take the uh, neurosurgical uh, extra tumor out. This uh, other name is uh, eight nerve sonoma. Now, this is the another CT scan of the temporal bone. Look at this, very beautiful picture. CT scan of the temporal bone. Now look at this. What is this? Look at this. This is the cochlea, inner ear. Okay, cochlea. So this is the cochlea, and this is the same sort of canal here. Uh, how nice, the, nice it is. Now this is the problem here. This mastered bones. This is some ear cells here, but these are large radiolucent shadow in the temporal bone. Uh, this is a classical picture of cholecystoma in the mastoid. So this is CT scan finding of cholecystoma. Okay, treatment is modified radical mastectomy with hemoplasty. Okay, so that I think uh, investigation apart from that, uh, we uh, have uh, vestibular investigation uh, actually. So how how we do the vestibular investigation? Like means if the patient has come to you with with vertigo. The symptoms of vestibular disease is vertigo. The, the symptoms of ear disease are just classically as you know, pain, deafness, tinnitus. But the, if the balance system is, is affected, then your vertigo, it is spelled something like that. So how do you investigate the vestibular apparatus or vestibular system? Classical one is, as you know, clinically you can go for a finger test to follow the uh, eye uh, to see any nystagmus. Then we have, uh, you know, Gait test, okay, you can ask the patient to uh, just a straight line walk. If the patient has some vestibular problem or cerebral problem, the patient can be spell like that, or swing down. With some uh, room rock test, close the eyes and just up and down like that. And underwater test like this. But what are the investigations you want to do for the vestibular apparatus in the ER system? So that is classical one for you people, if you need something short note, it's a caloric test. Caloric test is very important. Uh, we usually uh, just uh, do this test uh, in a lab, actually. Uh, we just, uh, we use a water, 70 degrees centigrade below and 70 degrees centigrade above the body temperature. That means 30 degrees centigrade and 44 degrees centigrade. We stimulate the air, uh, we stimulate the semicircular canal, and then patient will get nystagmus. You count the nystagmus, usually about some latent period of few seconds, and then your nystagmus will, will stay for about two minutes. Sometimes, some, some, some suppose you stimulate the uh, air with, with with water or cold or hot water, but you see there is no nystagmus. So this is called canal paralysis. That means patient have vestibular neuritis, patient have menial disease, patient have uh, neural neural lesion. So this is a uh, caloric test. Nowadays we are doing this test in the lab. We can also see the nystagmus. We can measure the nystagmus as a soft sort of the appearance in the graph. Uh, we can also uh, see the peripheral nystagmus or central nystagmus. This is for post not for you, but you have to know the only name of that. It's called ENG, electro nystagmography. We can also uh, get the video record. It's called BNG or uh, video nystagmography. So these are the tests, BNG or ENG. Uh, we can all other rotational tests, uh, all this. But for you people only, if you say one test is for vestibular apparatus, you see a caloric test and your ENG or VNG. I, I think that's all about your uh, test of, of, of ER diseases, but don't forget the common test. Examination is a tuning fork test, Renian Weber test, and sometimes ABC test. And for investigation for you people, you need a pietinodogram, you need impedance audiogram. And for the radiological investigation for OSP, uh, don't forget X-ray mastoid towns view, so in closer to as I show, and also CT scan of the temporal bone, and also CT scan of the brain. If you suspect patient has got intracranial complication, brain abscess, then go for CT scan or MRI scan. If you suspect patient has got acoustic neuroma, uh, like patient usually have a uh, eight nerve tumor, patient usually presents with vertigo, patient will present with one-sided hearing loss, then always suspect patient might have acoustic neuroma. In this way, you can write down MRI scan of brain, including CP angle tumor, means cerebellopontine angle. So you can get the CP angle tumor.
So these are the common investigation for you. Uh, I think uh, I think we have uh, done enough for you. Uh, don't forget to summarize your cases in the exam. What happened? You, you do a real mess in the exam. Very simple question we're asking, but you're not answering. The systematic way of, of examining the patient, but you're not. Even tuning for test, my God. You can just see this one. Can you hear this one? Sometimes the stem one, you can put the stem in the ear rather than the prong one. So this happens in the exam. In the exam, you are, I, I don't know what happened. You are lost somewhere else. That's why you do practice tuning for test and also instruction. Sometimes I, I saw the student, for months together, they're hearing this one. Just uh, put it here. They're not putting it in the back. Sometimes, without giving no, no, without giving any instruction, the, I will, I will make a sound in front of the ear and back of the ear. He will tell me which one you do here better in the front or in the back. But they only like that. No instructions. How could you elicit the response? Either ear conduction better than bone conduction. That's why every point you do mistake. So that's why you do repeated practice. The okay. I make a sound, I want to put it in your front of ear and the back of the ear, you will tell me which one is louder, in the front or in the back. Then you can compare ear conduction better or bone conduction better. And when again on this one, put it here, tell me why do you hear. So instruction is important and then do this one and do the practice. And just, uh, and sometimes you do the five vibrate, vibrate the tuning for very less. This is the only kind of process, the best one, just this one, the, this will move like that. You can also hear the frequency from outside. But sometimes you start very little without giving any energy. So the there will be no vibration. That will not hear anything. So these are the problem with thing, actually. And in the ear examination, sometimes in the examination, only keep tuning for. Not a system of the ear, just tuning for. That's why you have to read. And also then once you examine the patient, then summarize your things nice way. One, two, three, four, five, six, something like that. At the end of the examination, of course, give a thanks to the patient. Thank you very much for your nice cooperation. So that, I think that's all about your. And if you do practice, uh, I think it will be uh, okay. And today's discussion is uh, many, many, uh, many uh, OSPI materials I showed you, like your peer nodogram, Carhartt's nose, extremation tones view, your uh, CD scan of the temporal bone. Okay, that's all. I think uh, uh, I think you can uh, at least you can get some benefit from these uh, classes. Uh, thank you very much indeed. See you in next class. Bye-bye. Should I just stop here? Hmm? Leave?